Inside a dungeon, a hero called Spectre was in a face-off with the Ice Queen that taunted him on abandoning his team just to get to her. Answering everything will be fine after he finished her. The fight started and it was a stalemate. But Spectre managed to injure her in the exchange. The Frost Queen died and released a ray of light, a text appeared, saying he is absorbing the Frost Queen's power, causing him to be covered in ice. 76 hours earlier, a team of five heroes are outside of the Frost Queen's nest, one of them was angry after knowing that only one of them may enter the nest, and the rest will most likely die. They were deciding on who will face the Queen. One of the heroes said Spectre has the highest chance of defeating the Queen, another hero agreed reasoning most of them had a disadvantage in facing monsters with ice-based skills. The remaining two agreed while praising Spectre's ability. Spectre was hesitant. All of them trusted him and was sure that he would defeat the boss and their death wouldn't be in vain. Twenty-five years later, a presentation was ongoing, displaying the five heroes who sacrificed their lives to defeat the Ice Queen. They were all frozen like statues. Because of this many safe zones appeared on Earth. One of the children watching noticed that one of the statues moved, the presenter denied it because everything temperature controlled 24-7 inside the glass wall. And assured them nothing will happen. Everyone was surprised when the statue of Spectre shattered and he fell down, a text appeared congratulating him for absorbing 100% of the Frost Queen's nucleus and acquiring a skill called Frost X. Confused with all that was happening he fell unconscious. He woke up in a hospital, amazed after finding out he was frozen for 25 years. He found himself too weak after being frozen for too long. Doctors came into the room informing him that the player association president will be visiting him. He asked them if it's someone he knows, thinking that if it's someone he doesn't know he'll just send them away. They replied that the president said that he was a close friend of Spectre. He wondered who it was because there aren't a lot of people who would call him a friend. He thought the world has really changed and remembered his teammates' sacrifice for the peace they all wanted. But then he was confused about what to do and being unemployed, all he know is how to fight. He removed his mask saying he doesn't need it anymore. Because it's a peaceful world and the world doesn't need heroes anymore. The doctors was unsure on what to say. The president arrived and volunteered to explain the situation to him. He was surprised seeing a familiar face and asked if he was Diok Bu, the staff stifled a laugh. The president was embarrassed and asked them to leave. He addressed the hero with his real name Jun Ho. Jun Ho made fun of him for being bald. The president scolds him and expected too much for a touching reunion with a bastard like him. Jun Ho asked him about the doctor's weird reaction earlier when everything should be over. The president flinched. He explained that after they defeated the Frost Queen, every player received the message that the Queen has been defeated and safe zones will now appear on Earth, everyone was happy and celebrated, but the next message ended the celebration, stating that the next floor was opened. And moving to the frontier area is now possible. Meaning that the Frost Queen was just a start. The players, politicians and the association held a meeting and decided to send an expedition squad to the frontier. The second floor was contained a large amount of knowledge and resources. And they found out there's a total of 10 floors. Hearing this Jun Ho remembered that it took him and his team 5 years to defeat the Frost Queen. He estimated that in 25 years the current players should have cleared the 7th floor, but he also thought that his team was the strongest and the rest of the players were far weaker. That's the reason that only 5 of them went to fought the Frost Queen. He adjusted his estimates and they should have at least cleared the 5th floor. He asked the president which floor they are on, the president said that in the last 25 years, humanity has only cleared the second floor. Jun Ho was frustrated after hearing this and asked for the reason why. The president explained that to clear the third floor they need the Frost Queen's nucleus. The third floor is a volcanic region and only a few players can resist the temperature and explore the place. They found an altar that requires the Queen's nucleus to cool down the environment. Jun Ho asked nervously if they found the nucleus. The president was embarrassed and apologized that they couldn't find it after searching the nest for a long time. Jun Ho felt guilty because he had absorbed the nucleus. He feigned ignorance and comforted the president. The protagonist is very understanding lol. He thought how should he explain the issue. He decided to visit the museum where his team were displayed, he sat down and told them that the world's is in a better place now and offered them a drink. Noticing some dust on the statues, he tried to wipe it off, after touching one of the statues, a text appeared informing him he has insufficient magic to remove the seal with the skill Frost X. Seeing that he can break the seal he knew he can bring them back. 
He looked at his stat and found it was too low, and it will take him a while to build them up. He saw the skill Frost with an X rank, he was probably the only one with a skill higher the S rank. He also found a title that he received after killing the Frost Queen, which increases his stat by 30 every time he went up a floor. He thought he can regain his previous level and strength by going up the floors and bring back his team. He informed the president that he wants to be a player again. The president was surprised because back then he always talked about retiring. The president was hesitant because of the fiends. The fiends are players who uses their power to commit crimes and terrorism for their satisfaction. Continuing that there are no cameras on the second floor and no country can contain them. They remembered how the fiends wanted him dead back then. The only way he can return is to go back as Jun Ho and not as Spectre. The president asked him why would he want that, he answered that he needed to get to the 10th floor. And told him he has a way to clear the 3rd floor, and he confessed that he absorbed the nucleus. The president was so angry his blood pressure skyrocketed. He calmed down after a while and asked if the reason for him coming back was because of his comrades. He smiled and answered yes. They plan to keep his identity as Spectre a secret and deal with the doctors who saw his face. Jun Ho informed him that his abilities and stats are sealed and he is at level 1. Jun Ho asked the president to get him a new player license, the president explained that at present the guilds are more powerful than the association and made it customary to attend the exams, he can only take the public exams to get his license. The president told him they needed a good reason to support him and he needed to have the best results in the exams. The day of the exams, he saw it was quite busy, he sat down and used one of his skills to listen to the people around him. And found everything was peaceful. They watched the first examinee take the test. Jun Ho analyzed that the spear is good to keep the opponents at a distance, but when the enemy gets close waving the spear around won't help. The applicant failed as he was getting beaten by the goblins. It was finally Jun Ho's turn, the judges were not satisfied with the previous applicants and that they didn't even meet the basics. They saw Jun Ho enter carrying all types of weapons and thought he was another Spectre copycat. Duke Gu saw this and thought he was showing off too much. The test starts and the dwarves were demolished by Jun Ho's spear, many more appeared behind him, and he killed them with throwing knives. Some of the enemies ran away, Jun Ho sniped them with his bow. Remembering the one who taught him archery, his comrade Gilbert Green. The remaining dwarves rushed towards him, he used his sword to finish them. He was in pain after the fight because of his lowered stats. The judges were satisfied and praised his skills with the weapons, but seeing he only has weapon proficiency skills at D rank, they decided he wasn't worth the time and investment. Duke Gu smiled, thinking there won't be any problem recruiting him to the association. He felt bad for fabricating his profile. In the president's office, the president was losing patience with Jun Ho for lazing in his office. The president showed him the info on the uncleared gates and asked him if he was going at his current level. Gates are filled with monsters and traps, and gates that have never been cleared are called uncleared gates. Jun Ho explained that the rewards increases as time passes and dungeons that haven't been cleared in years will give a lot of exp. Duke Gu was worried, and there was a safe way to do it. Jun Ho said his comrades are waiting for him, and he will encounter the fiends eventually he doesn't have much time, he needs to get stronger quickly. They choose the gate called the novice's grave, and the clear condition is to survive till the sun rises. With this, he was tied to the association, he asked if he can stay in the association buildings. Duke Gu gave him an armor, and it was made by Quan Noya, Jun Ho wants to thank him in person, but Duke Gu reminded him that, people will be suspicious of him if he did that, and they will know he is Spectre. He decided to go to the dungeon after training his stamina for 10 days first. Ten days later, he entered the dungeon, feeling comfortable. Checking the clear condition he thought it wasn't too difficult. He just needs to survive until the sun rises. Previous parties who failed entered too late and fought right away after entering. Jun Ho waited until the enemy spawned. The monster was a zombie, he activated his skills and got ready to fight. He analyzed that zombies are hard to deal with because they don't feel pain and keep on attacking, and they're perfect to cause newbies to panic he understood why it is called the novice's grave. After killing all the zombies, Jun Ho was tired. He heard a voice calling out and asking for help. Jun Ho found its source and it was coming from inside a coffin. It said all of his team died except for him. Jun Ho asked it to yell loudly to find its exact location. After the shout Jun Ho found where the head is and he shoots through the coffin. Jun Ho understood why this dungeon had killed over 100 people, it was because of the thing inside the coffin called the tricker. 
it burst out of the coffin and raged asking how, but Jun Ho didn't give it a chance and sliced it in half. Jun Ho knew that there was no way there was someone left alive in an uncleared gate, and the previous players knew this, but they were fooled by the tricker and died. The text appeared that the dungeon has been cleared, Jun Ho's level went up by 4, and he received a skill called Confession of the Dead, giving him the ability to read the memory of the dead. He was excited and receiving a new skill as player Jun Ho. The world was intrigued about who cleared the Cursed Dawn dungeon in one day, Duke Gu was happy that the big guilds were being ignored. Duke Gu asked him if he really won't show himself, because if people found out that he was the one who cleared the dungeon he will be sought after, Jun Ho answered that it's not yet time. He wants to be someone that everyone wants, but no one can get. And eventually, people will find out who he is. Jun Ho was training hard just to increase his strength by one point. He then looked up the uncleared and picked one name Luf's Garden which appeared nine years ago and was Korea's oldest uncleared gate. Gates that are left for too long becomes an open gate where monsters will start to come out of it. That is why the government offered a higher ward to clear the dungeon. Many people tried to clear Luf's dungeon, there were 124 attempts and all of them failed and left it for the other countries. They hired a super rookie from India named Tusher Vishy. He was a genius with a bow. Jun Ho thought that he could have been at Gilbert Green's level or maybe better. But Tusher Vishy failed and they stopped the attempts on the dungeon. Jun Ho decided to be more cautious and prepared, he doesn't leave the possibility of the hidden dangers inside the dungeon. He started to train his frost skill to use it properly inside the dungeon. He wondered how strong it will be in a fight. Jun Ho entered Luf's garden and looked at the clear condition, it is to defeat all monsters. Jun Ho was cautious because even a party of four failed to clear the dungeon. He found a labyrinth but decided to ignore it for the time being. Luf's are known to spawn at night so Jun Ho waited and relaxed. As night falls two monsters came out. Jun Ho was a bit disappointed, he summoned an ice spear and threw it at the monster killing it instantly, Jun Ho was satisfied. More monsters appeared, and Jun Ho was thinking this was a monster wave. Jun Ho continued killing the monsters and chased the running monsters. He thought it was over, but more monsters appeared, he noticed that they multiply once they are killed. Jun Ho was overwhelmed by the number of monsters. And used the ice as a shield, then counter-attacked to kill multiple monsters. Jun Ho was exhausted, and was wondering how many monsters had he killed, he thought the dungeon was difficult, but it was not impossible, he remembered Tusher Vishy alone could kill half of the monsters that appeared. He was curious why Tusher Vishy and many people failed to clear the dungeon. Jun Ho killed the remaining monsters and cleared the dungeon, he explored the labyrinth and saw the corpses of the previous parties that entered the dungeon. He kept walking and reached the end of the maze, where he saw a corpse holding a bow. He remembered the bow was called the Tempest, if you fire an arrow with this bow, it will fly around unpredictably like a storm, hence the name. Jun Ho paid respects to the corpse and picked it up. He knew this was Tusher Vishy. He also saw a notebook on the corpse and read. The owner was commissioned to clear the Luf's gate in Korea, Tusher was shown accepting the request. At level 10 he was confident and that it was his only chance to enter the Luf gate, he looked for members to help him clear the dungeon, and his lover named Zaya went with him. He also got one of his friends to help him. At the airport, Zaya brought another member named Ram. The only thing left was entering the dungeon. Tusher was excited. When they entered the dungeon everyone was amazed by the scenery. They snapped out of it and remembered they were inside a dungeon and made plans. When the monster spawned, there are only eight appeared they thought it was too little. After a while, it had multiplied to 32, and they started to struggle until one of them got critically wounded. They retreated to the labyrinth while Tusher gave cover. Tusher noticed too that after they defeated the monsters they double in number each time. One of the members died while asking for Tusher to take care of his daughter. The next wave of monsters will come soon, and Tusher prayed for mercy. They defeated the fourth wave of monsters, and the fifth wave is soon to come. They were all exhausted, and Tusher was determined to leave the dungeon. He prayed that there won't be a sixth wave. This time his lover died and he found out that the remaining member was a fiend and tried to kill him. He was injured in a surprise attack. Tusher was furious as he questioned the fiend, and the fiend replied that they were useless, and he wants to get the Tempest bow from him. The fiend was unaware that more monsters were spawning behind him, Tusher ran and left the fiend, the fiend was confident he will die from the poison in his knife. When the fiend looked behind him he was attacked by the monsters. Tusher kept running while his injuries worsen, 
he reached the end and felt despair as he documented what happened, he accepted that he will die either way. The remaining message asked the founder of the notes to tell their families that they're sorry and ask them to get revenge for them. Jun Ho realized that the number of monsters scale off with the number of players who entered the dungeon. Jun Ho managed to clear it because he was alone and doubted if he were with more players. He took a notebook and plans to return it to the family, as for the bow borrowed it for a while and promised to take revenge on the fiends on their behalf. In the association, Duke Gu passed the message of the Indian government thanking him after returning the diary. And families were informed. Jun Ho was relieved. Duke Gu remembered the bow tempest and said it was a shame, but Jun Ho brought it out and showed him. Duke Gu went crazy and said he should have kept it hidden and it belongs to the Indian government. Jun Ho assured him that he won't use it carelessly. Jun Ho guessed that the fiends were after the bow and that the fiend with Tusher was just a lackey and he believes the boss will know that he has Tempest and come after him. Duke Gu had an idea who it might be, it was Demon Bow Cal Signer because he is a fiend known for collecting bows. He didn't come personally because there was a level limit in Luf's garden. Jun Ho was sure they will come after him at the next uncleared gate. Duke Gu was worried and told him to return the bow, but Jun Ho plans to use it as bait to capture the fiends. They were interrupted by a call from the media asking for an interview with Jun Ho after finding out he was the one who cleared Luf's garden. Duke Gu wanted to chase them away, but Jun Ho stopped and said they need a press conference to announce which gate he will go to next, so he choose where he can fight the fiends. At the conference, Jun Ho arrived wearing just casual clothes, the press was confused. Jun Ho remembered how we dressed up in the past as Spectre and found it annoying. He introduced himself and answered a few questions, then announced the next gate he will take. Everyone was in disbelief after hearing him, they asked him if he was sure, and some thought it may be too much for him, because it was the last uncleared dungeon in Korea. And it is believed that there is a boss monster inside. Jun Ho assured that if ever he faced a boss he will surely win. In the next scene, Duke Gu and Jun Ho were looking at all the commission requests Jun Ho received. They choose the one where a father was looking to cure his daughter of a terminal disease that needed the core of a cinder fox. Jun Ho remembered that he fought one before and he almost died. Duke Gu showed him the information about the gate. The monster inside was called the Heavenly Fox and it was at the national level and already killed seven teams. Jun Ho thought it will be harder than before. Duke Gu explained that other teams will be coming and the player standards have gone up since then. He then told him that it was his friend that commissioned the request, it was the CEO of the Myungo group, Choi Pil Ho, and introduced him to his own secretary and manager Cha Si Yoon. Jun Ho agreed that it will be suspicious if the president kept doing everything for him. On their way to the client, Cha Si Yoon explained what happened to the family and that the daughter suffers from Nine Yin Severance Syndrome. One of the ways to treat the disease was to use the fox's core. She continued that the who verified its effectiveness 29 years ago was the Spectre himself. She admired Spectre greatly. Jun Ho got embarrassed after hearing it. Cha Si Yu not knowing she was talking to Spectre was confused. Choi Pil Ho greeted them personally after arriving. He bowed and asked him to help his daughter. He offered him 15 billion won as payment and everything he needed will be provided for by the company. Cha Si Yoon thought that it was a great offer, and Jun Ho will surely agree, but Jun Ho declined immediately. Pil Ho raised the amount Jun Ho stopped by saying that 10 billion was enough. Pil Ho asked for his reason. He replied that his reason was the same as Spectre, that you shouldn't take advantage of someone who wants to save their family. After they left, Cha Si Yoon asked him if he heard that story about Spectre from the president. Jun Ho was surprised and answered yes. He asked her if she believed it. Si Yoon knew that Spectre saw how his own parents died and that someone like him wouldn't want others to experience the same pain. Inside, Duke Gu took him to the vault to let him pick his weapon to fight the Cinder Fox. He said that in the last 25 years, technology improved tremendously, resulting in better materials and weapons. Jun Ho tried one weapon and he was unimpressed, stating that in front of true predators, they will be useless. He then noticed a sword in the corner, Duke Gu said it wasn't useful, but Jun Ho showed him it was not. Outside the gate, a lot of people and media gathered. Cha Si Yoon informed him that 27 players will enter the gate. Before going out Jun Ho reminded her that after today, they will get a lot of requests. After seeing Jun Ho the media gathered around him asking questions. The other players were also talking about him. They all entered the gate after some time. Inside one of the players introduced himself as Cha Min Woo, a member of the top guild Cheong Hae. 
he proposed to work together to clear the gate and offer a commission while he will take the core as a clear reward. Everyone agreed after some thought. He noticed Jun Ho walking away and asked him to join them. Jun Ho declined and kept walking. The player beside Min Wu thought that the rumors about Jun Ho being a genius were exaggerated and that fighting alone was a bad decision. Cinder Fox is a boss monster that grows nine tails over thousand years. Once it grew all its tails, it will become a Millennium Fox. As the number of tails increases, the number of soldiers it can command increases as well. Jun Ho found a spot to scout what was happening and watch the other group. Meanwhile, the other group started to get attacked by fire foxes and activated their traps and stopped the attackers, they were light on their weapons and gained confidence while fighting. Suddenly the cinder fox appeared, seeing his minions dead, it was enraged. One of the members noticed it has nine tails and was shocked. Sin Wu tried to rally the team, but some were already scared. He was confident that their traps will be effective and that he will kill the cinder fox and surpass Spectre. In the next scene, everyone was shown lying on the floor and injured, Sin Wu couldn't believe that none of their weapons and strategies worked. He thought that it was impossible to kill the fox. The fox shot a fireball to finish Sin Wu, but Jun Ho arrived and sliced it in half. Jun Ho told Sin Wu to bring the survivors and leave so he can fight the fox properly. The fox attacked Jun Ho with fireballs not wanting him to get close. He blocked some of the attacks with his ice shield. As he was trying to get close the fox attacked him with a giant fireball. The fox noticed him inside the smoked and attacked, Jun Ho dodged by jumping into the air and used his ice as a foothold to get close to the monster and slashed one of its tails off which weakened it. Jun Ho taunted the monster as it was its first time being in pain. And it never imagined being the prey as it already killed many players. The fox attacked with a claw and Jun Ho countered by attacking one of its eyes as it was preparing for another giant fireball. Jun Ho pierced it with a huge ice spike killing it instantly. Jun Ho collapsed after the fight. A message showed that the cinder fox has been defeated and he received the cinder fox's core as a reward. Outside the gate, everyone was excited to see them come out. Sin Wu was carrying Jun Ho on his back. The press thought Sin Wu and his team was the one who finished the gate. But he told them the truth about what happened inside the gate. At the hospital, Jun Ho awoke with Cha Si Yun beside him. She told him while he was out they received a lot of requests. Jun Ho was not surprised and went out of the room to see President Choi Pil Ho. Si Yun tried to stop him because he hasn't recovered yet, Jun Ho told her that he just fainted and will rest after they see the real patient. Choi Pil Ho was grateful to Jun Ho for coming, but was worried because he heard he fainted inside the dungeon, Jun Ho replied he just took a nap. Pil Ho shook him to his daughter's room to start the treatment. After seeing her Jun Ho saw that the girl's condition wasn't good and he has to hurry. He took out the core, but he forgot that the power of the core is dangerous to normal people and sent the father out of the room. The father was worried seeing the power of the core and asked if it was really all right to use it on his daughter. Jun Ho assured him that he knew the method Spectre used the last time. Before the father left, he held Jun Ho's hand and said to take care of his daughter. Jun started and found that she was worse than the one he cured last time and tried to use the core carefully. Suddenly a message appeared that he can absorb the yin energy using the frost skill and upon absorbing his magic stat will increase. Jun Ho was surprised, he realized that the frost skill has no weakness, attack, or defense, and now it can absorb energy. He wondered if his skill watchguard of darkness can do the same. He planned to test it out later. He absorbed the yin energy from the girl and he remembered the previous incident where the patient was under a heavy burden after using the core. But with the frost skill, it was much safer. After a while, Jun Ho came out exhausted and told her father that she will recover with no side effects. The father thanked him and planned to increase the payment, but he knew Jun Ho would decline, so he told him that if he needed any help in the future, the Myungo group will assist him with anything. The Myungo group is the number one company in Korea, and their real weapon was Choi Pil Ho's eldest son, was the guild master of the Scarlet Tower which ranked fifth in the country. Jun Ho thanked him and that he will not harm the Myungo group's reputation. On their way back Jun Ho thanked Cha Si Yoon for a great job. In Duke Gu's office, Jun Ho showed Duke Gu the Cinder Fox core and told him that he didn't have to use it on the president's daughter because he used his frost skill to absorb the yin energy. Duke Gu was surprised. Jun Ho continued that he can absorb any yin energy from any target and asked Duke Gu to help him find artifacts that have yin energy for him.
Junho also decided to visit the black market to look for artifacts. Outside, Junho saw how lively the market was and remembered how desperate everyone was. He was glad that everything was peaceful. He went inside a theater and used secret teleportation on the seat which brings him to the black market. He remembered one of his teammates Skaya. He arrived at the black market some people recognized him and tried to intimidate him. He told them to move, but they got scared and went away Jun Ho was surprised it was that easy. Inside a shop, the attendant recognized him and pointed him to the shelves of artifacts, Jun Ho saw some items with low-level energy from the artifacts and asked the attendant to show him the other room which kept the best items. The attendant was angry about how he knew about it and showed him inside the room. He saw an item that has a frost attribute, the attendant warned him not to touch it because it is cursed and causes the player's body to freeze. Jun Ho put it on and saw its stat. Frost Fairy Wrath, rare grade cursed which increases speed stamina and magic. He saw it has an intermediate level of frost energy, Jun Ho was happy that he can get the same amount of magic as last time. He bought the items and left. He went inside a bar to use their teleport service to go back to Korea. But he will have to wait 10 minutes to use the teleportation. Three players approached him and tried to intimidate and use him to increase their fame. Jun Ho just laughed and told them they are leeches, and they bully weaker players to put their names on the papers. Jun Ho invited them to attack him. The other people in the bar were curious and recognized Jun Ho, they were disgusted by how the three were ganging up on one person. The gang didn't care, they wanted fame from defeating a famous hero Seo Jun Ho. Jun Ho took out his knife and asked the bartender how much more time till the teleportation, bartender answered 4 minutes. Jun Ho stepped closer to the gang and said it was more than enough to play. The gang mocked him for using a knife, but Jun Ho answered it was enough to smash bugs and doesn't need his sword. One of the gang members got angry and attacked. Jun Ho dodged the spear and then delivered an elbow to the guy's face knocking him out. The people inside were surprised. The other member attacked with magic, Jun Ho dashed to the other guy with a sword. The magic user thought Jun Ho was a newbie who hasn't killed anybody and lacked experience. He cheered on his buddy. Bai Jun Ho broke the guy's arm without any emotion. The magic user was confused and scared. He attacked again with his magic. We saw one of Jun Ho's abilities which allows him to read the enemy's breath. Jun Ho parried the attacks and nailed the guy's hand to the wall. Jun Ho told them that he doesn't want to see them again, and the big guy agreed. Jun Ho left for the teleportation while the people inside were cheering for him. He found it weird that they were acting like players in a game. After coming out he thought of his friends and missed them. Meanwhile, inside a car, some people were watching Jun Ho's fight in the black market the one called Princess was interested in him. On the street, Jun Ho was annoyed with the fans taking pictures with him. But someone approached and Jun Ho recognized her as Dakibi's Princess Gong Juha. Jun Ho knew was being scouted by the big guilds. He was also relieved to get away from the people. Inside a cafe. Gong Juha was complaining about how hot it was. Jun Ho was confused because she has fire abilities, she reasoned the problem was she liked cold things. Jun Ho wondered if she was really the Dakibi princess. She asked him if he wants to join their guild and told him the vice master asked her to scout him, and he passed in terms of combat and future potential. Jun Ho asked her if she has already seen what happened in the black market. She told him he is good at fighting, and asked him if his skill really only a deer rank weapon proficiency. Jun Ho confirmed. This makes her want him more. As he is already this strong with only one skill. She showed all the incentives he will get once he joined them. Jun Ho was amazed and thought this was the reason all the player left the association and went with the big guilds. Gong Juha continued that they are the strongest guild in the world and they have the most information about the second floor. She thought there was no way he will refuse. But Jun Ho declined as she was talking. She was surprised and asked his reason. Jun Ho stated that doesn't want to be chained to the guild's order and carry out all their missions. She understood and warned him, he asked her jokingly if she will take revenge on him. But she clarified it was because the fiends were a lot more active lately even on the first floor. Jun Ho thanked her as she left. In the office, Jun Ho relayed to Duke Gu what Gong Ju had told him. Duke Gu asked him if won't regret not joining them, as they will be more helpful to him. Jun Ho reasoned that the guilds are too strict. And he doesn't want that. Duke Gu was touched and gave him a whole floor to stay in. Jun Ho also asked him to set the Eastern Gate conquest a week from now. He plans to set the bait for the fiends to come. 
The news of Jun Ho declining the Kibi Guild and raiding the Eastern Sea Gate has spread. Cal Siner watched and he ordered his minion to send someone to get the Tempest Bow from Jun Ho. Cal Siner suddenly felt he was being watched and attacked. The reason he can't get the Tempest himself was because of the Sword Saint. Jun Ho wondered if the fiends took the bait and were suspicious of the Shadow Brothers who were joining him as medics. He asked Cha Si Yun for information about the two. He used his darkness skill and found that he could spread it around the area to train his magic. And he knew that he couldn't avoid using his darkness skills while inside the Eastern Gate. He reviewed the gate's information called the Eastern Gate Island of the Forgotten Dragon, the clear condition is to rout the Nameless Dragon. He thought it will be hard to fight dragons because he doesn't have any flying skills. He received the information about the Shadow Brothers that Cha Si Yun sent. And found that the brothers Vincent and Edver from America are a veteran of 200 successful missions and both use shadow skills. They later said in their interview that they admired Jun Ho and wanted to help him clear the last uncleared dungeon in Korea. On the day of the raid, a lot of people were gathered outside the gate. Inside the car, Duke Gu was scolding Jun Ho for not focusing on the mission. Jun Ho assured him that he already defeated the Ice Queen and won't be easily killed by a nameless dragon. Duke Gu was worried that the Shadow Brothers which might be working with the fiends will be going with him that he thought about calling off the raid. Jun Ho comforted him that if they attack him he has a plan. The two brothers greeted and praised him and were surprised when he replied in English. They thought they would have communication issues. When they were entering the gates, one of the brothers tried to attack Jun Ho while the gate was opening. He hesitated when he felt Jun Ho's aura and stopped. The brothers whispered that they need to find another chance to attack him. While they were looking for the dragon, Jun Ho was cautious. Suddenly a huge shadow covered them, it was the forgotten dragon boss. They noticed that Jun Ho was already gone. The dragon attacked the two while Jun Ho was watching them from his hiding spot. Vincent asked Edver to find Jun Ho while he distracts the boss. Edver dashed to the jungle to find Jun Ho. He noticed a shadow thinking it was Jun Ho and told him that they needed their help. Then he suddenly attacked but the shadow dispersed. Edver felt an ominous feeling seeing the darkness cover him. Jun Ho appeared behind him and told him he was a fiend, Edver denied it and told him to not make any accusations. Jun Ho told him to hide his scarlet eyes. Demon clans rarely appear inside the gates. If you killed and drink their blood in exchange, you'll numb your emotions and give you a violent nature. And the ability to use Magi. Edver attacked Jun Ho with his shadows intending to attack his legs. Jun Ho used his night walking skill and disappeared. Edver was terrified while being surrounded by Jun Ho's darkness. Vincent was having a hard time dealing with the dragon. As Edver runs out of the jungle, saying Jun Ho has hidden his strength. Vincent scolds him for falling for Jun Ho's bluffs. They plan on how to attack the dragon's weakness, the reverse scale. The dragon attacked killing Vincent's summons and damaging Vincent in the process. Edver used his movement skill to get on the dragon and find a reverse scale. When he found it he pulled it off and hesitated. Jun Ho was watching them and thought they were idiots for attacking the dragon's reverse scale, which will cause it to be enraged. Edver jumped off the dragon full of injuries from the lightning. The dragon continued its attack while the brothers dodged. Jun Ho wants the brothers to buy him some time. He took out the tempest bow and sniped the dragon stopping its attack. The brothers knew Jun Ho can't defeat the dragon alone. The brothers planned to transfer the dragon's aggro to Jun Ho by letting him attack, but they failed. Jun Ho created arrows from darkness and fired them into the sky. The arrows rained on the dragon's back, causing it to fall to the ground and be unable to move. The Shadow Brothers were surprised, and Jun Ho showed them the Tempest Bow. The two pleaded with him saying they were just small fries. Jun Ho told them to fuck off. One of the brothers attacked, but Jun Ho chopped his head off. The second followed, Jun Ho parried and stabbed him, while saying they should repent in their next life. Jun Ho walked to the nameless dragon and delivered the finishing blow. Jun Ho received 20 kilograms of dragon bones as a reward and a few levels, and he decided to check later. And went to the bodies of the two fiends. He used the confessions of the skill allowing him to read the memories of the dead. Jun Ho saw the crimes committed by the fiend and stopped as he thought he killed them too quickly. He searched for information about the fiend's association and saw where they received their orders. He also saw the man who gave the brothers their power. The skill stopped as his skill is too low to recall the complete memory. Next, he used the skill to read the dragon's memory. He found out that the dragon was previously a human emperor. 
Jun Ho felt guilty after killing his ancestor and paid his respects. The dragon's soul ascended and thanked him which resulted in him clearing a hidden mission, he received the flute of title breath and the title helper of ascension. Jun Ho was surprised after seeing that he finished a hidden quest that gave him level and a unique grade item flute of the title breath, but there is a usage limit the item will break after three uses. Jun Ho felt fortunate after seeing what he got from the raid. After coming out of the gate there was a press conference, the media was talking about how dangerous the gates were and that even the Shadow Brothers died. Jun Ho fake cried and said that it was his fault that the brothers died and he would not forget their sacrifice. Cal Siner was angry as he was watching and thought Jun Ho was lucky. They planned to send the watchdogs to the Las Vegas auction. At the office, Jun Ho was overwhelmed by the number of commission requests he received. He was confused as he said in the conference that the Shadow Brothers did most of the work to clear the gate. Cha Si Yoon told him that luck is also a skill and he should get a haircut, Jun Ho told her that she can leave early and she was happy and left immediately while reminding him to get his haircut. Outside, Jun Ho was walking and remembered that when he was wearing his mask, everything was much more simple. He decided to a comic library and saw there were no people and removed his mask and if they were going bankrupt. He planned to sit at his usual spot and order Raymond, but then saw a girl sitting there. And was surprised to see it was Cha Si Yoon. They were both shocked to see each other. Si Yoon was looking at him and said that there is nothing wrong with an adult reading what she wants. Jun Ho joked about the title of what she was reading, and she got angry and asked him about his book. Jun Ho thought it was no better than her. They both compared what they were reading, and Cha Si Yoon said it was no different from her book. After a while, they were both satisfied after finishing their books. Jun Ho told her he was a bit surprised to see her there and thought she was one of the elites and wouldn't go in a manwa bang. She replied she liked it here and that no one would bother her and she liked the smell of old books Jun Ho agreed. They bid their farewell and Jun Ho thought Cha Si Yoon works hard and he should do the same. Jun Ho told Duke Gu that he would go to the States and find the fiend's meeting place. Jun Ho gave him the dragon bones and asked him to give the rest to Quan Noya to make him a sword. Jun Ho was laying on his bed and asked Si Yoon to get him a plane ticket to Las Vegas and looked at his items and stat. And thought it won't be long until he could use sword aura and hunt on the second and third floors. He wondered how strong the top players were after 25 years. Jun Ho arrived and complained about how tiring the plane ride was. He missed Skaya when they could just teleport on their way. He looked up the fiend's meeting place and decided to finish it quickly to get some rest. At the meeting place, two fiends were talking about how scary the watchdogs were and how they killed his boss just because they wanted to. The three watchdogs arrived and asked for their orders they saw that their mission changed and was upset that they were not going to the second floor. The leader looked at the order and then burned it. After confirming there were no other orders they left. The two fiends were relieved. The other fiend thought the leader looked like a decent person the other scolded him and said that the leader named Arma was a student of Nazid Hallo, one of the strongest players in the world. The strongest players were called the Nine Heavens. The fiend was scared and knew skeleton mage Arma was the one who caused the massacre in Turkey, originally watchdogs have five members, but Arma didn't like the other two and burned them. Jun Ho arrived and killed the two fiends and was upset they didn't know much and only delivered orders. He thought that the watchdogs would be different. He called Duke Gu and asked if he could help him get a ticket to participate in the Las Vegas auction. Jun Ho went to the place where the auction will be held to familiarize himself. Duke Gu sent him an expensive suit to wear for the auction, so Jun Ho wouldn't affect his image if he looked bad. Jun Ho tried to enter the casino but was blocked. One of the guards recognized him and introduced himself as Ha Inho the one with Gong Juha when they tried to scout. Jun Ho remembered they were a funny pair. Inho asked him what is he doing in Las Vegas, Jun Ho told him he was participating in the artifact auction. Inho said they were hired by the hosts as security guards and were just patrolling. Inho explained why the alarm went off when Jun Ho tried to enter. It was because players aren't allowed on the normal casino as players would use their abilities and casinos lost a lot of money, so they made a casino just for players where the dealers are also players. Jun Ho asked if wouldn't it be advantageous for higher level players, In Ho answered players level doesn't determine their game skills. As they saw Gong Juha losing at a table. Jun Ho understood that she wasn't the type to calculate probabilities or fight mental battles, and that this game is more advantageous for players who have good visual skills. Jun Ho sat beside Gong Juha and asked if it was fun. 
she was surprised to see him and joked if he had changed his mind and wanted to be her underling. Jun Ho told her he was participating in the auction and just wanted to look around. Gong Ju had told him that she was the captain of security at the hotel and to let her know if anything happens. Jun Ho wondered if she was allowed to gamble while working. She explained that all of the dealers are qualified to enter the second floor and their identities are hidden. Jun Ho went all in and persuaded him not to as he needs to get used to the dealer's speed. Jun Ho asked her why she kept losing after getting used to it. Emotional damage. The dealer shuffled the three cups while Jun Ho watched. Juha was sure as she picked the left cup and thought if she will bet again Jun Ho stopped her and thought she has no talent in this. Jun Ho picked the middle and he was right Juha thought it was beginner's luck. Two players approached the table and Jun Ho recognized them as members of the watchdogs. Jun Ho smiled as he didn't have to find them. He decided to play more to find a chance to deal with the fiends. Since the number of players increased the dealer also increased the number of cups to five. The dealer shuffled and asked them to choose. The fiend girl chose the middle Jun Ho and the guy fiend chose the same cup and they were correct. Jun Ho knew that the guy would be more trouble than the girl. Juha was impressed and asked how he was so good. Jun Ho remembered Gilbert teaching him. The next round the guy fiend and Jun Ho choose the same cup again and won. Dealer went to substitute and Jun Ho showed Juha an artifact that looks like a compass and said that President Duke Gu lent it to him and it will help him find a particular kind of people if he used mana on it. Juha was curious. Jun Ho used it and it pointed toward the watchdogs. Jun Ho acted confused and excused himself to go to the bathroom. The guy fiend also stood up to follow him. Jun Ho lured him into an alley. The fiend thought that the artifact allowed Jun Ho to find fiends, and Jun Ho ran once he found out what they were. Jun Ho threw the artifact and it broke. The fiend was confused and understood it wasn't a real artifact. He asked Jun Ho if he lured him here and how much Jun Ho knew about them. Jun Ho told him about their schedule tomorrow. The fiend attacked Jun Ho was surprised at his speed and wondered if he is an accelerator user. The fiend was confident and told Jun Ho that he can't dodge the next attack. Jun Ho baited him to attack by closing his eyes. After the attack missed the fiend's arm was already frozen. Jun Ho mocked him that speed is useless if he was predictable. The fiend attacked again and Jun Ho froze his other arm and gave the finishing blow. The two remaining watchdogs knew that one of them got taken out. The leader showed the girl the list of players currently in Las Vegas and asked her to look. She pointed out Jun Ho from the list. Arma was confused at how his subordinate lost to Jun Ho as he was a newbie. He saw that he was also involved with the Shadow Brothers and there was a possibility that Jun Ho came to the. Arma designated Jun Ho as a threat and to find a way to kill him. On the day of the auction, Jun Ho arrived and saw Juha buying iced tea. He greeted her. And she joked about him leaving for the bathroom and never went back. She was angry at him for showing her an artifact and then leave and she lost sleep thinking about the artifact. He apologized and she asked him to treat her somewhere expensive. They bid their goodbyes. Jun Ho continued to the auction. Ju had entered the auction and was amazed and saw a lot of famous people. She was nervous but thought he could help right away if he was closer to the stage. She found her seat and sat down but was surprised to see Jun Ho and told him that the seats are reserved and he can't seat wherever he wants. Jun Ho showed her his invitation. She was surprised as it was a VIP ticket and thought Jun Ho spent all his money buying his suit and asked how he got the ticket. Jun Ho told her Duke Gu got it for him. She told him that you can't get the ticket unless you're a powerful people in the country and thought he was the president's proxy. Jun Ho understood why Duke Gu sent him the expensive suit and planned to interrogate him after he comes back. Juha asked him what does he want from the auction, he was unsure. She boasted that she was a pro and job comes first. He was relieved that Yuha was present. He planned to go after the fiends alone until he saw the fiend's memory as he can't fight Arma alone with his present power. When the fight starts he would need Dakibi's help. He thought if the rumors of Juha were true, he could get heaven's breath and protect everyone in the auction. The auction started and Juha was buying all cold attribute items. Jun Ho reminded her that she was a professional and has to do her job she replied something about multitasking lol. Juha asked him why he isn't buying anything. Jun Ho only bought one necklace, Juha was curious why he bought it and asked if it was for his girlfriend of mom. Jun Ho told her that her mom is dead and she felt bad. The next item came up called the unknown ball, Jun Ho's skill keen intuition reacted and he got curious. 
other people are shown talking that after 20 years no one found out what it was and seeing it was being auctioned again they knew they gave up. Jun Ho didn't know why his keen intuition reacted to it, but he decided to buy it. The next item came, the heavens breathe. Jun Ho was curious how much will it cost Ju has said it will depend on how much the country leaders called. As the bidding went up the attack happened as Jun Ho expected. One of the bodyguards created a shield and protected everyone from the falling debris. Jun Ho was impressed as he did in an instant. Juha was thinking about who among the fiends would do something crazy and summoned the skeletons Jun Ho offered a clue, and Juha agreed. Juha took command and gave orders to evacuate the audience and protect the auction items, as she was trying to order Jun Ho she saw he was already gone. The people inside are panicking as they saw the shield about to break from the attacks and tried to squeeze on the small doors, so Juha punched a big hole in the wall to use as an exit. As she was talking with Inho a hole appeared and a bullet came out hitting Inho which caused the shield to break. As she saw the skeletons coming in Juha attacked destroying the skeletons and damaging the building. The girl member of the watchdogs watched in amazement and wondered if she was human. And thought she truly is truly one of the strongest special attribute users. Ruler of flames ranked S and doesn't want to fight her head on. She saw the heavens breathe and used her skill to teleport the item from a distance to her location. As Arma called if she got the item. Arma told her to proceed to point B right away. She was disappointed that she couldn't kill Jun Ho, but she suddenly saw Jun Ho running from afar. She was excited and took aim at him and planned to take him out quickly. She used her skill to teleport the bullet close to Jun Ho's head, but he dodged it easily. She couldn't believe it missed and took another shot. Jun Ho saw the portals and used his skill shadow step and disappeared. She was surprised and thought that even a ranker like Ha Inho couldn't dodge her attack. She then noticed where he was headed, but it was too late. Jun Ho appeared behind her and froze her body. She was terrified and asked who he was, Jun Ho answered that it doesn't matter as the watchdogs will disappear tonight. At the auction. Juha was still fighting and planned to take a vacation to Antarctica after she's done. One of the bodyguards told her that Heaven's breath was missing. She was confused about how it was stolen. The skeleton kept coming, and Juha was confused about how his members were being overwhelmed. One of the guards noticed that the armors the skeleton was wearing were the same as the people who went missing three years ago. She remembered the disappearance case on the second floor. Even their fighting style was the same. They understood it was the same missing players. Jun Ho read the watchdog's memory and saw their plans and where they would meet up after the mission. She doesn't have much information about the Fiend Association and wonders if the leader Arma shares information with them. According to the watchdog's memory, the skeletons attacking the auction house were sacrificed by Nazid Hallo, and his student Arma was the one controlling them. He was thinking of how he could get to Arma as charging recklessly to the hideout with traps set up as suicide. He saw the Fiend's watch and thought of a plan. Arma received a message that his subordinate was being followed he asked about the item, and the subordinate confirmed and will hide the item in an alley and leave their mark as she was still being followed. Arma was curious about who was following them. He went to the location mentioned and sensed the item in a trash can. As he picked up Heaven's breath he wondered if magic cores were always that cold. It suddenly exploded and froze his arm. He calmed himself and knew he had fallen for a trap and knows the one that set it up is close. He summoned his skeletons around him and planned to take down the enemy. Jun Ho appeared behind him while saying he was defenseless while casting. Before he could attack Jun Ho stabbed him. Arma wondered if Jun Ho was waiting for him to cast from the start. Arma asked for his name. Jun Ho asked him back if he answered the questions of all the people he killed. Arma had no answer as Jun Ho gave the finishing blow. The skeletons at the auction disappeared on Arma's death, Juha wondered if the mage called them back or if he was killed. Jun Ho gained levels after killing Arma, he could not have killed him if he didn't fall for the trap, and he would be the one in trouble. Jun Ho used his skills and read Arma's memory. He saw how the fiends recruited Arma and how he became the leader of watchdogs. The ultimate goal of the fiends is to dominate the tower. The vision stopped as his skill is too low to recall the memories completely. Jun Ho was angered as he saw they turned orphans into fiends, as they were treated like items and discarded if they can't keep up with the training. He decided to stop them before they make more fiends like Arma. He wondered if the man he saw in the memories was Nazid Hollow. Back in the auction hall, Juha was upset as they still could not find Heaven's breath, she got angry that if it wasn't for the fiends she should have been sleeping. A guard told her that someone left a gift for her she it was from a fan. 
The guard told her that what was inside may shock her. When she opened it and saw what was inside she thought it was a great replica the guard confirmed it was the original. She shouted in surprise and asked didn't the skeleton mage took it. In the gift, a note was written saying the skeleton mage and two fiends has been dealt with. Retrieved heaven's breath. And told them the location of the skeleton mage's corpse. Signed by Fan. She was curious who it was and told the guard that she wants to meet him. But the guard answered that they couldn't find any clues from the area where they found the corpse and thought he might be a pro or at least a ranker. They saw Jun Ho coming in. She scolded him for leaving during an emergency and running away like last time at the casino. She said that Spectre once said that player's power exists to protect the people. Ijin asked if he said that, Ju had told him it was Spectre not him. He cringed that he said something corny. She showed the letter to him and boasted that she has a fan that caught the skeleton mage and sent her heaven's breath. Her guards said that it was at least a ranker she was really curious about who it was. Jun Ho doubted if it was really a ranker. Juha insist and that they investigated the area and there was no trace on the corpse or the alleyway. Jun Ho smiled secretly hearing this. He used the skill Skaya taught him and it was very useful. Juha also noticed how the letter was written and it looked natural and thought the fan must be a fluent English speaker. Jun Ho told her that if the fan wanted to reveal their identity they'll do it themselves. Juha agreed and asked him why is he there as the auction has ended. Jun Ho told her that he was just there to pick up the items he bid on. She pointed to a counter and told him that they distribute the items there. They said their goodbyes and said the next time they meet would likely be on the second floor. She told him if he climbed the second floor within half a year she will give him a present. If he can't do it then he will have to grant her wish. He knew she would make him join their guild. They shook hands and it was a deal. He got the two items he bought, the unknown ball and the stamina regeneration necklace. He was still curious why his keen intuition skill reacts to the ball, he used magic on it, but nothing happened. He kept it in his inventory and used magic on it from time to time. On the second floor frontier area housing we see someone picking up the necklace Jun Ho bought the man saw a note inside, saying he will come up after half a year from uncle. The man understood. He arrived in Korea and was picked up by Cha Si Yoon, Jun Ho was thankful that she came to pick him up. She told him that it was part of her job Ben asked him if they were going straight to the association. He remembered something and gave her a present. Jun Ho said that he didn't know what to buy, so he just looked for a book and wasn't sure if he will like it and that it was the only one left. She was happy and said she looked everywhere for a copy, but it was already sold out. Jun Ho told her tea to wake him up when they arrive at the association. In the president's office, Jun Ho told Duke Gu that he contacted Arthur and told him he will be coming up soon. Duke Gu said that the kid went through a lot since what happened 25 years ago and is doing well. He haven't seen him since he went up to the second floor frontier. Arthur said that he doesn't want to go down because Earth reminds him of his father. Jun Ho asked Duke Gu to help him find an orphanage and explained to him what he found out. Duke Gu was angered and drank the alcohol Jun Ho brought him. He calmed down and told him Quan Noya was looking for him. He said that the sword that he requested will be finished tomorrow and wanted to give it to him in person. Duke Gu assured that with Jun Ho's current career, there will be no suspicion even if they meet. Jun Ho agreed. Duke Gu told him to go tomorrow seeing him excited. Jun Ho decided to take a rest. Jun Ho arrived at Quan Noya's shop and thought it was the same as it was 25 years ago. He entered and saw Quan Noya's grandson on the forge and couldn't believe it was the same crybaby back then. He leads Jun Ho to his grandfather. Noya chided him as it was hard to see him around, Jun Ho smiled and said it's been a while. The grandson was confused knowing that this was their first meeting. Noya asked his grandson to serve agar a tea for Jun Ho. Jun Ho praised the grandson's skill, but Noya said he still has a lot to learn. Jun Ho joked that why has he not welcomed him back. Noya patted him on the shoulder and said he had already gone through a lot. Noya asked him why he came back as a player, Jun Ho showed him the frost power he acquired, and Noya knew it was the frost queen's skill, he explained that he can save his teammates with it. Jun Ho reminded Noya that they made a contract together a long time ago, and Noya said with a serious his that his contract was with Spectre, not with a newbie named Seo Jun Ho. Jun Ho was stupefied, Noya laughed as he was just joking with him, and wanted to see his stupid face, since it's been a while. Jun Ho thought Noya called him there to make fun of him. Noya showed him the sword he made, Noya says he wields the hammer for him, and Jun Ho wields the sword for Noya. That was their promise.
John Ho joked to Firili said. John Ho held the sword and thought it was perfect. Noya explained that he mixed new materials and the durability is better. John Ho checked the sword's stat and saw it was called the Black Dragon Fang, a unique great item. He compared it with the swords that he used from the association's storage and found it was on a different level. John Ho complimented Noya saying he was skilled as ever. Noya said he has gotten even better after 25 years and invited him to play Go. John Ho was surprised as Noya had never beaten him before in Go. Noya shouted saying that he was far better now. The tea arrived and John Ho was surprised as he hasn't tasted this kind of tea before and asked Noya what is it. Noya offered to tell him if he beats him at Go John Ho smiled and agreed. After a while, Noya was fuming after losing to John Ho. John Ho calmed him down and reminded him about the tea. Noya explained about the second race they are monsters that resembled humans, like orcs and elves. He said that they have changed since the second floor opened and that they are intelligent enough to communicate with humans. John Ho asked if even orcs can communicate with them, Noya confirmed, but not all second races can do it. John Ho asked why he brought them up. Noya said that the agar tea came from the elves. John Ho thought if he can get to the second floor then he can get some of the tea. Noya scoffed because unless he finds intelligent elves and make a connection with them, he can't get it for even a billion gold. John Ho asked Noya if knows something about the unknown ball he got from the auction. Noya scolded him that he is not a sage and doesn't know everything. But he knew it was an elven item and was sure because he met an elder of an elf tribe before and felt the same energy from the ball. Noya suggested he go someplace where he can meet elves. John Ho bid his farewell. The grandson gave him some agarit as Noya told him and said his grandfather must really like him. In the car, Si Yun informed him about a gate in England where dark elves appear. The gate is called Wild Forest and asked if he was interested. John Ho said yes. Si Yun also informed him that Xiong Hei Guild will also participate. He remembered that they were the guild that was with him when he fought the Cinder Fox. She continued that even players all over the world are gathering. John Ho asked for the info on the dungeon. The gate is located in Grantham, England, and the goal is to kill the Dark Elves tribe leader, only 20 to 30 players can participate, and a party of cap of 200 people. John Ho sighed. Cal Siner was furious after finding out that the watchdogs have been annihilated. The minion thinks that we're caught in a trap while trying to take care of Seo Jun Ho. As they were, talking Nazid Hallow arrived and asked him if Seo Jun Ho killed his disciple, Cal Siner's answer was unsure. Nazid Hallow slammed him on the wall as he didn't like his answer, Cal Siner begged for a chance, and he will bring Jun Ho to him. Nazid Hallow released him and give him half a year to bring Jun Ho to him. Cal Siner reasoned that he can't bring Jun Ho to the second floor, as Jun Ho needed to be at least level 30, and there was no way Jun Ho can do it in six months. Nazid Hallow warned him that his life was on the line, and to make it happen as he disappeared. Cal Siner asked his minion to look for a pathfinder. A pathfinder allows him to go down the dimensional elevator while evading the association. Cal Siner decided to go to the first floor himself. Meanwhile, Jun Ho arrived early in England and plans to clear smaller gates as a warm-up. Jun Ho thought that if 200 players can enter the dungeon will be extremely difficult and knew he can't protect all 200 people. At the day of the raid, strong players gathered near the gate. Cha Min Wu was shown looking for someone. One of his team made it teased him if he was looking for Jun Ho. He remembered how Jun Ho fought the Cinder Fox and admired him, he was excited to show him how he has changed. They noticed Jun Ho and approached him. Jun Ho thanked Min Wu for carrying him out of the gate after fighting the Cinder Fox. Min Wu asked him if he would like to join their party. Jun Ho agreed as it would be inefficient to go alone. After they went and Jun Ho was confused after seeing the other guilds going off on their own. Min Wu explained that they use terminals these days to communicate after entering the gate. Jun Ho was clueless. One of the members teased him about being a time traveler from the past. Min Wu introduced the other members to Jun Ho. Choi Jin Pio was the healer the girl that teased him was Seo Miri. Her skill lets her see the close future of whatever she looks at, but it has a long cooldown. She also needs to tell the target what she saw, there will be a penalty if she doesn't. Jun Ho thought that she'd tell him about his friends. Miri clarified that her skill is only a sneak peek and she can't see far into the future, it isn't always accurate as the future is ever changing. They can use her skill to see if any danger lies ahead. Min Wu has a physical reinforcement skill. Five hours later Min Wu showed him the other team's location as they communicated that they haven't seen any dark elves yet. 
Miri thought the reason they haven't found any Dark Elves is that the Dark Elves' numbers are low. Jun Ho thinks there is something wrong and that there was no way the enemy's numbers are low as the party cap is too high. And was suspicious as to how they haven't found any Dark Elves. Jun Ho explained that Dark Elves are prideful beings that they wouldn't stand by when there are intruders. Jun Ho asked Miri to tell him around what time they were fighting when she saw his future. She estimated it was at night. Jun Ho thought for a while then took out a sleeping bag. He said the Dark Elves will probably make a surprise attack at night. Miri said she would notify the other guilds. Jun Ho said they might not believe it. Jun Ho said he will take a nap first and then they will take turns resting. Night came, then we see two players on watch talking in front of a bonfire. The other player said what if the Dark Elves really made a surprise attack, the other player was doubtful and said it was nonsense. He mocked the Dark Elves' intelligence and how they couldn't resist a temptation of power and that they were incapable of organized attacks. They noticed multiple eyes in the darkness and were relieved when they see it was just Woldogs thinking they were afraid of the fire. The player who mocked the elves then saw figures in the trees and told the other player to wake the team up as they were surrounded by the Dark Elves. Jun Ho suddenly woke up feeling that something was wrong. Miri told him nothing has happened yet and he could go back to sleep. He asked about the other parties and she said Night Watch is posting updates every 30 minutes. Miri was confused as to why no one has posted and thought there might be a problem with the communication. Jun Ho knew they have been attacked as he saw with his hunter's night skill the Dark Elves surrounding them. Jun Ho smiled as he was excited seeing the Dark Elves making coordinated attacks with trained Woldogs. Jun Ho ordered Miri to wake Min Wu, she wondered why as she doesn't see anything. As she was talking a Woldog attacked her from behind Jun Ho and killed the monster as the Dark Elf riding the Woldog fell into the bonfire. Jun Ho thought he shouldn't use the sword given to him by Noya to face these small fries. Jun Ho killed the attacking elves. He noticed one elf attacking him, but let it stab him in the back. Jun Ho was satisfied with the armor Quan Palmo, Noya's grandson gave him, as the attack didn't hurt him. Duke Gu asked Palmo to make Jun Ho armor from the dragon bones Jun Ho gave him. Jun Ho was grateful to him. Jun Ho intended to let one elf run to the forest so he can use the confessions of the dead and read its memory without his party seeing him. One of the elves attacked and Jun Ho killed him instantly and told the other elf to run. After seeing the elves' memories, he comprehended that the dark elves ate the branches of the world tree and gained power in exchange for their intelligence, but the leader's intelligence wasn't affected and saw they have 1000 dark elves and the dark elven knights the leader's bodyguards. Jun Ho came back to the party and made an excuse that he chased one elf. Jun Ho asked how are the other parties. Miri said that they can't reach anyone and probably they are in the middle of a battle or maybe wiped out. Jun Ho said they need to save them. Meanwhile, the other parties are overwhelmed by the attacks. As one player asks for help as he sees the elves attack to finish him, Jun Ho arrives and killed the elf and the Woldog. The party leader thanked Jun Ho, saying he was the savior of the Blue Whale party. Jun Ho asked how many casualties the leader said they lost five people and blamed himself for what happened. Jun Ho asked the Blue Whale Party to head north, saying they can fight together and minimize their casualties. Jun Ho estimated that there are at least 500 Dark Elves remaining and they had a chance at winning if they survived the night. Jun Ho told them to go north and gather the others, then come to the east after cleaning up. The leader has lost morale after what happened. Jun Ho told them they have to keep fighting and carry out revenge for their comrade. The leader thanked him and decided to follow Korea's new star. In the next scene, we see a player making his last stand and surrounded by Woldogs, he accepted his death, but was surprised to see the attacking Woldogs get killed he saw a man and wonders who it was. The player was thankful and if it wasn't for Jun Ho they would have been annihilated. They survived the night and Jun Ho estimated that the elves lost half their forces and probably won't attack them anymore. Jun Ho thought they should be on the offensive. He saw two players arguing about whether they had to clear the gate as fast as possible and send the critical players to a hospital with high-level healers, the other players reason that it isn't fair for everyone to sacrifice themselves for one person. As they aren't prepared to fight. Jun Ho sighed seeing this. Min Wu asked him what he thinks. Jun Ho explained that both options have pros and cons, but thinks the best option is to clear the gate as soon as possible, and the reason they are clearing it quickly is that they would be at a disadvantage the longer it takes. A player asked why Jun Ho answered that the Dark Elves aren't normal, probably a much more powerful being commanding them. 
a player asked if they assume that 500 Dark Elves left what about the Waldogs? Jun Ho assured them that there aren't any more of them as they saw the size of the Waldogs chasing the last player they rescued and understood that they were pups. Dark Elves used the pups as they lost all of their adult Waldogs and they won't be able to attack them at night anymore. Jun Ho continued that the Dark Elves may attack their camp with poison arrows until they are tired and then finish them. Everyone agreed. Jun Ho approached Miri to look into his future, she saw where the Dark Elves hideout is located and also saw a Dark Elf with an ominous aura and five Dark Elves with better armor surrounding it. Jun Ho thought they might be the tribe chief and the Dark Elven Knights. He was a bit disappointed as he already knew most of the information. Miri asked that he was holding something made of ice and asked if it was an artifact, Jun Ho was surprised and asked her to go back to camp first. He thought the tribe chief was strong enough for him to use the frost skill and was worried. The team found the dark elves' lairs and that elves were guarding the entrance and also found the tribe chief and the dark elven knights. The tribe chief on the throne and the dark elves around him are in a formation. Jun Ho stretched and asked if everyone is ready. All 147 players are ready. They arrived at the Dark Elves' lair and noticed that there is only one entrance, Jun Ho said the chief was smart, and if there was only one passageway meant that if they can't kill all the elves inside, they won't reach the tribe chief. They went inside and found the Dark Elves gathering in a large chamber and saw the tribe chief sitting on the throne. Everyone was nervous. Jun Ho raised morale by saying the chief might give some elixirs that can save someone on death's door, and the distribution will be based on contribution. Everyone cheered and charged to the Dark Elves. Players and Dark Elves clashed as Jun Ho swept the enemy the other players were astonished and had a hard time following him. Min Wu tried to follow Jun Ho but was overwhelmed, Jun Ho told him to fall back and that it will be dangerous and Min Wu thought it was crazy to go alone. Jun Ho told him he does a lot of crazy things. Min Wu knew he can't fight by his side yet and he still have a long way to go. Min Wu won't fall behind next time, Jun Ho smiled and anticipated their next meeting. The Dark Elven Knights blocked Jun Ho and he decided to take out the sword Noya gave him. The Dark Elven Knights before they became corrupted were Elven Knights that protected the kingdom they use sword techniques and borrow the strength of the spirits. Jun Ho thought he couldn't defeat them normally, but since their spirit contracts are cancelled, he was confident. One of the knights attacked and Jun Ho dodged while analyzing his enemy. Jun Ho smiled as he was excited about the coming fights. He countered and cut the knight's arm off. The elven knight tried to run away, but Jun Ho blocked him and then stabbed the dark elven knight. The other dark elven knights watched as Jun Ho told them to try harder. Jun Ho noticed that the players are struggling and starting to get overwhelmed by the dark elves. Players getting injured and the healers can't keep up. The players are getting exhausted, but then they say the dark elves running at them. They saw the Dark Elven Knights attacking the other Dark Elves, but they noticed Jun Ho was luring the Dark Elven Knights to the Dark Elves and destroying their formation. The players knew Jun Ho was helping them. Min Wu rallied the players and attacked. Jun Ho seeing the players take the upper hand and decided to finish the Dark Elven Knight chasing him. The tribe chief watched as his minions died. The tribe chief was angered by Jun Ho's mocking of the Dark Elves and was ready to fight. The tribe chief took a stance and Jun Ho was surprised because only elves with the power of spirits can use that technique called Genia Manus and the corrupted dark elves can't use it. The tribe chief attacked and they clashed swords after the exchange Jun Ho knew it was an original technique made by the tribe chief. The chief and Jun Ho trade blows until Jun Ho managed to injure the tribe chief. The tribe chief seeing his loyal followers dead was enraged and attacked Jun Ho. He was sent flying before crashing to the wall, the tribe chief followed with another attack, but Jun Ho dodged and thought this was the power they saw in Miri's vision. Jun Ho took out a gun, but the tribe chief sliced the bullet and attacked Jun Ho. Jun Ho knew he can't hide his powers any longer, but was hesitant seeing there were too many people watching him. The tribe chief landed a kick on Jun Ho which sent him flying to the walls. Jun Ho was severely injured and can barely move. The tribe chief was in the motion of killing Jun Ho, but the other players grabbed the tribe chief stopping his attacks, Min Wu ordered to protect Jun Ho. The healers came up to Jun Ho and found his ribs are broken, and it will take 30 minutes to heal him. One of the players said that they saw him defeat the dark elven knights and push the enemies alone and told him that it was inspiring. There were only a few enemies left, which was why they were able to help him. Jun Ho asked them to give him 10 minutes to recover. 
the players were struggling to hold the tribe's chief and doesn't know if they can hold on for that long. The chief broke free and started to attack. The players went back to formation deciding to put their lives on the line. The tribe chief was furious seeing the players not giving up. The tribe chief felt nervous seeing Jun Ho looking at him. The tribe chief went on a killing spree putting the players in desperation. Jun Ho stood up and thanked the players. The tribe chief attacked, but Jun Ho covered both of them with a screen blocking the players outside. The players thought it was the tribe chief's skill and was worried about Jun Ho. The tribe chief asked Jun Ho if he was hiding his true power. Jun Ho froze the area while asking if this was what a boss monster feels when looking down on humans. Jun Ho divided frost power into three categories. First was the utility where he freezes the ground, giving him a field advantage and lowering his opponent's stamina. The second was intuitive. He covers his armor and ice to increase his defense. The final is by using the frost skill to supplement attacks. He covers the watchguard of darkness and ice, saving him mana. The tribe chief blocked Jun Ho's attack and asked him why he hid his power, he answered that he couldn't help it and asked the same question to the tribe chief. The chief explained that his ability allows him to borrow the power of a corrupt spirit and something he can use for long. Jun Ho told the tribe chief that he will only need five minutes to kill him. The chief laughed, but he stopped when he Jun Ho displayed a skill similar to a sword aura. Jun Ho explained that it was a technique he created which strengthened the sword using his magic, and he called it Ramadat. Jun Ho attacked, and the tribe chief didn't have the time to react. In the next scene, we see the tribe chief on the floor with Jun Ho's sword embedded in his chest. The chief requested Jun Ho to finish him in one strike. Jun Ho showed him the unknown ball asking if he knew what it was. The tribe chief was surprised to see that it was a spirit egg and that the spirit can be born wherever there is the power of the world tree. The tribe chief gave Jun Ho his necklace which contained the power of the world tree and told him to pour his magic into the egg to hatch it. The tribe chief prayed to the world tree to have mercy on his followers as he was dying. Jun Ho couldn't believe that the ball was a spirit egg. If you make a contract with a spirit, you can use powerful abilities without consuming mana. Jun Ho remembered feeling jealous when he sees people with a spirit. Jun Ho was sure it was a darkness spirit as spirits make contracts with those who have good synergy with it. He can already see fighting alongside it. Jun Ho hatched the egg smiling. The players outside have defeated the remaining dark elves and were waiting for Jun Ho to come out. They were all worried. They suddenly saw a message that they have cleared the gate and cheered for Seo Jun Ho. The boundary disappeared and they saw Jun Ho walking out. The players greeted and thanked him, but Jun Ho just said he was fine and walked away. They thought it was because of the hard-fought battle. On the plane, saw the news of him clearing the gate, but he didn't care saying it was all useless. He was feeling bad as he didn't get a darkness spirit, but got a frost spirit instead. And it was the frost queen. She was curious how the planes could fly without magic. Jun Ho was thinking that she was the one that froze his friends and terrorized people around the world, and that he was the one that killed her, he wondered why she become his spirit. The spirit said that she was called and was the most compatible with Jun Ho's magic, meaning the element that he was most suited for is frost. Jun Ho reasoned he only used frost for only three months, while he used watchguard of darkness for five years. The spirit told him to stop being stubborn and make a contract with her. Jun Ho told her that he won't because of the things she had done to the people, she asked him what has she done. Jun Ho stopped because he can't think of anything. He said she froze the Pacific, but then it stopped global warming. He thought of his friend she was the one who froze them. The spirit explained she was not the one that froze them, and her powers helped him melt the ice and insist she didn't do anything wrong and felt sorry for herself that he killed her. Jun Ho secretly messaged Duke Gu and asked him what the frost did wrong. He replied that she froze him and the five heroes and nothing more. The frost queen saw it and was curious. Jun Ho asked her why he would want to make a contract with her. She offered to be his teacher, but Jun Ho said that she lost to him, she agreed, but reasoned that Jun Ho defeated her in a weakened state and swore on her existence that she didn't lie. Jun Ho knew the oath of existence that magicians use with their magic on the line. He asked her how weak was she. She replied, but Jun Ho can't believe her answer and called bullshit. Jun Ho finally agreed to make a contract with her on one condition that she will not endanger the people around him, and she agreed. Jun Ho thought that he was still too weak to clear a one-star gate on his own, 
but with her help, it will be enough, and we'll try to see how strong the Frost Queen is. In the association training room, Jun Ho was excited to witness the spirit's capabilities. However, the spirit abruptly stopped her demonstration and announced that she had lost interest and no longer wanted to use her powers. This made Jun Ho angry and he felt a headache coming on. The spirit explained that when she becomes curious about something, she loses her concentration. Jun Ho asked her what she was curious about. Later, we see Jun Ho taking the Frost Queen outside. She was amazed and continually asked Jun Ho questions about everything she saw. Jun Ho became frustrated and asked if others could see her. The Frost Queen replied that only if she wanted them to. She then spotted a cat and approached it, but it tried to bite and swipe at her. She exclaimed that it was a ferocious beast. Jun Ho explained that it does not bite humans because they are bigger and only shows its weak side to those who are strong. The Frost Queen became angry and promised to show Jun Ho her power in the training room. Inside, the Frost Queen summoned various weapons in an instant, leaving Jun Ho impressed. He thought she could wage war on her own. Jun Ho told her not bad which angered her. He told her that he can make these things given the time and that what he wants from her is something that he can't do. The Frost Queen thought for a while then showed him, Jun Ho was excited and the Frost Queen was pleased. At the president's office, Jun Ho asked Duke Gu if he knows what the Frost Queen looks like, he answered no because only Jun Ho and the five heroes saw her. Jun Ho asked the queen to show herself, Duke Gu was scared and that offended her. Jun Ho explained to Duke Gu how he got the Frost Queen and said that she will be a big help in battles. Duke Gu asked what's her class. The queen said she was an arch spirit, but they didn't believe her. Jun Ho told Duke Gu that he wants to clear one star gates alone with the queen's help he can do it. Duke Gu said that there are only three one star gates left on earth located in South America China last is Antarctica which Jun Ho plans to clear next, gate name Winter Castle. Jun Ho asked the Frost Queen if she knows anything about the dimensional elevator, Jun Ho thought that if they can find out its origins, they can put an end to everything. She replied that she knows nothing and explained that when she was defeated by Jun Ho, she can't remember any information about it. The queen assured him that even though her memories disappeared, she will be of great help to him in the days to come. Jun Ho asked her how does she use her power as he knew spirits don't consume magic from their contractor. She explained that spirits use their contractor's mental strength, and if the contractor's mental strength weakens a spirit would be unable to use their abilities. In the press conference, Jun Ho told the press that he would enter the Cave of Trials. The Cave of Trials is where players face different levels of trials, and every time a player clears a trial in the cave, they are given the choice to continue or to give up and leave safely unlike other gates. Jun Ho continued that he will be challenging the Winter Castle. The press went wild. Frost Queen was worried about Jun Ho, as many think it was too early for him to enter the Cave of Trials. Jun Ho told her that the Cave of Trials rewards players depending on how much they suffered and the difficulty of the gate is fixed. Meaning that if you are even one level lower you will receive more rewards for clearing the same level. The Cave of Trials doesn't allow players to enter again once they receive their rewards, Jun Ho thought that he may be allowed again, reasoning that he entered as Spectre. And lost the rewards and his stat resetted. Jun Ho asked the Frost Queen to help him in his training, after they get back the Queen was happy as she will become his master. Jun Ho met with the first floor administrator of the dimensional elevator named Gray. The administrator referred to him as Spectre surprising Jun Ho and congratulated him for his return. The Queen was also surprised as he could see her too and referred to as Sovereign of the Cold Frost Queen. The administrator told Jun Ho that he already cleared the trials 28 years ago, and the rule stated that those who already received the rewards cannot enter a second time, even if Jun Ho changed his name. Jun Ho reasoned that he already lost the rewards he received from the Cave of Trials. The administrator analyzed him and found that he is telling the truth while releasing his aura. The administrator found that the problem isn't about breaking the rules, but an issue of fairness as Jun Ho already knew what trials he will face in the cave and that it will be unfair to the other players. Jun Ho told the administrator to increase the difficulty to balance it out. The administrator asked him if he could handle it, Jun Ho was confident. The administrator agreed and wished him luck while leaving the queen asked why her memories disappeared, the administrator answered that he cannot speak of that. They were teleported inside the cave of trials, the Frost Queen was frustrated that she has no memories related to the floors. Jun Ho started the trials and completed the level 1 magic trial easily. The Queen praised him, but boasted if it was her it would only take her one second. 
a message appeared if would like to proceed to the gravity trial. Jun Ho decided to continue without rest. The queen asked why Jun Ho suddenly struggling to move, and Jun Ho told her that the second trial changes the force of gravity on the body every minute, and the following trials are all things considered to be torture. He finished the trial and decided to continue, Frost Queen was worried and told her to rest first. Jun Ho thought this would give him better rewards the more he suffers. The next was the phantom trial, Jun Ho remembered the illusion where he fought to save his parents from monsters and had to remind himself that it isn't real it ended after half a day. The illusions appeared, he saw it was his comrades calling him a liar and a traitor. Frost Queen told him to not listen to them, but Jun Ho remembered how they sacrificed and sent him up knowing they would die. Jun Ho shouted and wouldn't want them to be insulted like this. Jun Ho knew that fighting them all at once will be suicide. He asked the Frost Queen to stop Skaya and Ramadit, the Frost Queen told him that it will take a huge toll on his mental energy, Jun Ho replied it doesn't matter, and how long can she hold them, she estimated about 30 seconds. Jun Ho decided to take out Hilberto and Mio because they have low defense. While the Frost Queen summoned ice golems to attack Skaya, Jun Ho felt his mental strength draining. Ramadit tried to attack Jun Ho, but the Frost Queen stopped him. As Jun Ho advanced, Hilberto aimed and fired at him, but he managed to evade the shot. Jun Ho realized that even though it was an illusion, Hilberto's magic bullet was flawless. As Hilberto lined up another shot, Jun Ho suddenly vanished. Hilberto was shocked as Jun Ho reappeared behind him using a night walk technique and killed him with one strike. Mio was furious and swore to take revenge. Jun Ho knew it would be challenging to defeat her in a sword fight, but he thought he might have an opportunity to attack as she was emotionally affected by Hilberto's death. She attacked Jun Ho, but she got careless and gave Jun Ho an opportunity to strike and killed her instantly. The Frost Queen was already struggling as her golems were destroyed by Skaya, Jun Ho came and blocked some of the attacks and protected the Frost Queen. He praised her for a job well done. Ramadan attacked while Skaya supported him from the backline. Jun Ho knows the two have the strongest synergy and will have to go all out to defeat them. Jun Ho attacked, but Ramadan just took it and was unaffected. He ran away while Skaya attacked with magic and Ramadan followed him. Ramadan blocked him and hit Jun Ho with a body blow. Jun Ho used the opportunity to attack and stabbed him. Ramadan was confident the attack won't affect him, but Jun Ho used the law of life and it pierced through his body. Skaya went berserk seeing Ramadan die. Jun Ho used the death scythe to break through the shield that protects Skaya, he finished the attack and was thankful that it was not the real Skaya or he would have lost. He cleared the trial and decided to continue. Jun Ho woke up in the rest area after sleeping for 30 hours straight. The Frost Queen was astonished by the Death Scythe's power, but knew it took a huge toll on Jun Ho. Frost Queen asked how many trials remain, Jun Ho was unsure because the administrator changed the contents and the difficulty. After exiting the rest area the fourth trial begins, and it was the insomnia trial, and he cannot sleep for 10 days. After 60 hours Jun Ho was miserable as the Frost Queen reminded him not to fall asleep. 98 hours and he was close to falling asleep, but the Frost Queen woke him up. 24 hours left the Frost Queen was cheering for him. Jun Ho thought that he need to at least reach the ninth level to save his comrades and receive the stats and hero's mind reward. Jun Ho woke up from his thought when he heard the Frost Queen calling him and pointing to the timer already over. He was relieved and lay down. Jun Ho rested then entered the sense trials, which tested his sense of smell, taste, sight, and hearing. Next, it was the stillness trial which combined the sound and silence trial. The Frost Queen communicated with him using Morse code asking if he will eat. He thought she was having fun using it after teaching her. Jun Ho was determined to finish the trials, he knew up next was the void trials where most of the players give up, and he remembered he was one of them. As he finished the stillness trial, a message appeared that trials 9 and 10 void trial and time trial will happen concurrently. Jun Ho was surprised, then a warning appeared saying to cancel if he can't handle the trial, as his existence may disappear. Jun Ho knew he can be stuck and unable to feel anything. Jun Ho signaled to the Frost Queen that he will be back, she wished him good luck and will wait for his return. He began the trial and was surrounded by the void. Jun Ho was wondering how much time has passed and thought if he would give up just like the last time. He reminded himself that he made a choice and he refused to die in a place like this. Jun Ho woke up with the Frost Queen greeting him. 
He asked how much time has passed, and she said it was 10 days, Jun Ho cursed the cave, as he thought he was there for a month. The queen noticed that something has changed in him. Jun Ho checked his body and found that his magic loss rate was at 0%, compared to 3% when he was Spectre. He was on the same level as Skaya who was blessed by magic. This gives him perfect magic control. He tested it out and attacked the cave walls. They were surprised, and the queen said was much stronger than last time. He cleared the trials and was impatient to see rewards. Jun Ho saw that two of his skill increased by two, and while his stats increased by 20, it was double the number of rewards he got in the past. He also noticed a new title limit breaker which gives him one random stat every time he levels up. Jun Ho estimated that by the time he reaches level 130, he would have 100 bonus stat in total, increasing the gap between him and the other players. The Frost Queen interrupted Jun Ho's daydreaming and said she wanted to leave the place. Outside, a monk and a bodyguard were waiting, but then they noticed the cave of trial rankings had been updated, and Seo Jun Ho was now ranked number one, having successfully cleared the tenth floor. The monk was surprised exclaiming that a legend had just been born. Meanwhile, Cal Siner is seen visiting an orphanage, and a blonde man greets him at the entrance. The blonde man says that they are doing this for the heavenly demon. Cal Siner addresses the man as Milo Torres and cautions him about casually mentioning that name around children. The blonde man snaps his fingers and all the children stop what they are doing. Torres Milo said they are being trained to become powerful fiends like him. Torres Milo claps his hand and the children return to their previous activity. Torres Milo then invited Cal Siner inside. Duke Gu informed Jun Ho that the orphanage they were looking for is located in Paris and showed him a picture of Torres Milo a retired player. He was seen walking with children, and every time Torres Milo appears in the area, a missing persons report will be filed within a week. He also shows up downtown once every two months, and next week will be exactly two months. In the following scene, Jun Ho is fatigued and unable to locate the orphanage. The Frost Queen suggests they return to their lodgings and rest. As Jun Ho is walking, a child collides with him and attempts to steal from him, but Jun Ho apprehends the child and demands that he return the stolen item. The child returns the watch, and Jun Ho threatens to call the police. Jun Ho then inquires if the child is familiar with the area, to which the child confirms. Jun Ho treated the child to a meal and found his name was Marco. Marco was eating, but he remembered his family at home, Jun Ho asked how many are they in the family and ordered takeaway for them. Jun Ho found that they have parents, Marco replied that they don't, but there is a priest who visits the family once a month and thinks they are from the Vatican. The priest said that to make them clean human beings they take one child at a time to paradise and said paradise is where they can study, wear clean clothes and eat three meals a day, but Macro doesn't want to go to paradise because the priest gives off a bad vibe. Jun Ho asked if they were able to see the kids that went to paradise. Marco replied that they can't see them, but the priest sometimes brings the letter the children wrote themselves. Jun Ho asked when is the priest's next visit and invented a story that he lost his sister and maybe the priest could help him. Marco told him that he will help him meet the priest. In the Vatican, Spectre came to meet the Pope. The Pope was embarrassed that they were living comfortably while Spectre and the five heroes fought for peace. Jun Ho asked the Pope if he knows something about paradise, but the Pope was unaware. Jun Ho thought that the people who were impersonating the priest and kidnapping children must be demons. Before he left, Jun Ho warned the Pope that a fire may break out in the next few days and to have the fire brigade ready. In Marco's lodging, Jun Ho woke up while Marco was asking him why did he sleep there. Jun Ho told Marco to guide him to the priest. While they were walking the Frost Queen noticed that Marco's steps were light, so Jun Ho asked Marco if he was an aspiring player, Marco confirmed and said he was practicing to be a player. Jun Ho told him it will be hard, Marco replied that he will do it to protect his family and remembered the priest said there is a player training course inside Paradise. Jun Ho thought this must be their way of capturing talented children. Marco plans to go when the priest visits and after he receives his license, he will be able to earn and enter the gates. He intends to become an amazing player like Spectre. On their way to the church they saw Torres Milo with a child, Marco knows the child and calls for her, and said she left the family two months ago to join Paradise. Torres Milo instructed the child to greet Marco with a cheerful demeanor, and the child hugged Marco while smiling. Torres Milo also greeted Marco. Jun Ho approached them while pretending to scold Marco. 
Torres Milo was suspicious of Jun Ho because he was wearing a mask and sunglasses. Jun Ho introduced himself as Sunny as they shook hands. Torres Milo noticed something and asked Jun Ho if he was a player. Jun Ho confirmed and said he was only level 27, which disgusted Torres Milo as he thought to himself that Jun Ho wasn't worth his time. Jun Ho asked Marco if Torres was the one from Paradise, and he confirmed and said he saw Torres with the priest. Torres was confused about how Jun Ho found out about Paradise. He fate cried and said that his reason for coming here was to find his younger sibling that was lost 15 years ago, and he learned about Paradise while searching for his sibling. Torres thought that he can't let Jun Ho go as the existence of Paradise might be exposed to the world, so he decided to invite him to the orphanage. Jun Ho thanked him. They arrived at the orphanage and a teacher welcomed them. Torres secretly told the teacher to make sure that no one followed them. Torres brought them to the auditorium and showed the children training to be players. Torres asked Jun Ho if he could teach the children a lesson and introduced him. Some of the teachers also entered the room. The eyes of the teacher and the children turned red. Marco was surprised as Jun Ho told him to remember those eyes are proof that Torres is a demon. Jun Ho asked if he fed the children demon's blood. Torres mocked him and said some children refused, but after killing some of them, they rushed to drink it. Marco was angered knowing that all of the kids that went were turned into demons. He tried to attack Torres, but he was stopped by one of the children. Torres laughed at him as Marco said they will be punished by Spectre. Torres said that he would have believed it 25 years ago, and no one will fear Spectre even if he returns. Jun Ho stepped forward and said to Marco that if he wants to become a player, he must hold on to his weapon till the end, even when facing an opponent he can't beat. Jun Ho wore Spectre's mask while saying he wasn't a player yet so he will help this time. Marco was confused if he was really Spectre, but he asked him to save his siblings. Torres and his minions laughed while mocking Jun Ho thinking he was an imposter. One of the fiend approached and said if he was Spectre his head should go flying in the next five seconds. Jun Ho replied it won't even take five seconds as he attacked and killed the fiend. The other fiends were terrified as they recognized the skill Darkness Warden, a dark type ability that Spectre uses. Torres ordered the fiends to kill Jun Ho, while thinking that there was no way he was the real Spectre. Jun Ho snapped his fingers, and the two fiends got devoured by the darkness instantly. The other fiends tried to dodge. Jun Ho thought it was useless while feeling satisfied that there was no limit to his magic power. He killed the other fiends easily. Torres was terrified as he remembered the legend of Spectre killing 100 demons on the spot he ordered the children to grab onto Jun Ho to buy time until reinforcement arrives. Jun Ho stopped the kids by covering them with darkness. Torres ran away, but he fell thinking he tripped, but he saw his foot cut off. Jun Ho asked him if they ever considered what it was like for the children to be forcibly turned into fiends. Jun Ho killed him after hearing his bullshit then used confession of the dead on Torres. He saw how Torres craved power and became a fiend. In another scene, Torres was kneeling to a man called Chef Roxanne Azar. He tasted Torres's ability and wondered how to make it taste like it as a reward he told Torres why the paradise was created. 24 years ago the fiend established an organization on the second floor and was scared that the five heroes will be awakened and kill them. Their solution was to create paradise and make their own specter. Paradise is the ingredient factory to select children who have awakened as demons. And the chef takes the ingredients and manufactures them into a new grade, then use the ultimate sense of taste to create the same abilities as the specter. Jun Ho also learned that the chef will be waiting for him on the second floor. Jun Ho felt guilt as he learned that the reason thousands of children forcibly turned into fiends was to create a second specter and felt it was all because of him. He knew that once a player becomes a fiend they can't become a human again. He has no choice but to end the children who have been turned into fiends. Jun Ho went inside and saw Marco asking him to save his siblings. Jun Ho told him that it was impossible and explained that if a normal person consumes the fiend's blood, they can only adapt and die or become a fiend. Anna woke up, but she tried to attack Marco. Jun Ho subdued Anna then a message appeared saying a low level of demonic energy felt and that he can absorb it using the watchguard of darkness's ability. Jun Ho was surprised, he wondered if they can still be saved. Marco stood and said he should be one to take care of his siblings. Jun Ho smiled and praised the boy, saying it was rare to find a player that will weep for others and that he will become a good player, but right now there's no need for him to carry such heavy responsibilities. After absorbing the demonic energy from the children Jun Ho sent them to the Vatican to be examined. 
A priest came out and said all of the children are confirmed to not be fiends. The Pope arrived and wants to publicly announce the incident and warn about the dangers of the fiend. Jun Ho asked the Pope to take care of the rescued children, as the church has a part in what happened, the Pope agreed to provide housing and education to all the children involved. Marco thanked him and said he will work hard to be his underling, but Jun Ho rejected him saying he doesn't take underlings, he only accepts comrades. Cal Siner was enraged seeing the news of how Spectre destroyed Paradise and plans to kill him next after Seo Jun Ho. In the Players Association, Spectre saw the people outside cheering for him and was surprised. On their way to the conference, Duke Gu asked Jun Ho what was the announcement about, he asked if Duke remembered when he first woke up and thought the world was peaceful, but it wasn't, and that the absence of the five heroes. The fiends thrive and the weak suffered, and that 25 years ago the fiends weren't able to do it. Duke said it was only because the five heroes were there to stop them. Duke Gu cautioned him about the dangers of coming back as Spectre, explaining that many people would be targeting him and that people would look to him for answers in any incident that occurs. He also stated that he and his comrades have already done enough. Jun Ho was hesitant, but there was no one but him who can do it. Duke Gu sighed and asked him what he need to do. Jun Ho told Duke Gu to increase the volume of the speaker as much as possible. At the conference, Inho was observing and saw all the big six vice masters and team leaders gathered, but stopped when he noticed Juha was not listening, Juha was excited to see Spectre. Spectre and Duke Gu arrived and the conference started. A reporter asked if he could provide proof that he was indeed Spectre. Jun Ho stood up and displayed a sword aura. Everyone was stunned. The reporter then asked after the incident in Rome and if he will be returning to the field. Spectre replied that he had originally planned to retire, as he believed that the world had become peaceful thanks to him and his comrades' sacrifices, and felt relieved that they were no longer needed, but after seeing the horrors of paradise, he realized that he couldn't retire. He told them that over the past 24 years, 6,000 children have been kidnapped and killed by the fiend, the press was shocked by the numbers. Spectre continued that it could have been easily prevented if the players, the guilds, and the association joined hands and make it as the fiends never shows up again. Spectre addressed the fiends and told them Spectre has returned. Jun Ho was satisfied that the announcement is gaining attention. He was startled when the Frost Queen called him just to ask for his help on the TV. As Jun Ho was on his way to the training room, Duke Gu called him to inform him that all of the leaders of the top six teams had come to see him. Jun Ho wondered why the Big Six was looking for him as he asked Duke Gu if they came for Spectre. Duke Gu told him that they came for Seo Jun Ho, he thought about it and understood that the Big Six were already on the first floor to recruit Seo Jun Ho. Duke Gu warned him that some of the Big Six are violent and that they rather break something if they can't have it. Jun Ho laughed as he thought of an idea. Jun Ho arrived and greeted the Big Six and asked what they wanted. One of them said they wanted to recruit him as he was ranked first in the Cave of Trials. The others were there for the same reason. Jun Ho apologized and said that he couldn't transfer to another organization. One of the big six offered to pay any fees for breaking his contract, but Jun Ho stopped them by putting Spectre's sword, the demon beheading sword, on the table. Jun Ho explained that Spectre had given him the sword as a token of proof and had chosen him to be his official delegate. The big six were surprised by this. Ju Ha didn't think that Jun Ho was this close to Spectre. Jun Ho continued that Spectre had proposed three conditions. First, Jun Ho would continue his affiliation with the association to avoid bias. Second, the guilds that accepted the proposal would receive a great amount of information and influence on the second floor. And third, the guilds that accepted the proposal would provide any information that Spectre requested. In return, upon receiving the information, Spectre would publicly announce the guild's contribution. Juha thought that the Big Six had no choice but to accept the offer in order to receive his approval, as after Spectre's conference, the guilds were investigated for not doing enough to stop the fiends and were only concerned about filling their pockets. The Big Six said they would need to consult with their guild masters. Jun Ho left saying they should contact him if they made a decision. The Big Six knew that as long as Jun Ho was Spectre's proxy, they wouldn't be able to recruit him, and they wondered if Spectre saw potential in Jun Ho to become as strong as the five heroes. They also knew that Spectre had an eye for spotting potential, as he did with Hilberto Green, who only had one D-rank skill, but everyone ignored him, only Spectre saw his potential. 
Ju Ha caught up to Jun Ho, Jun Ho joked that he wouldn't give her special treatment just because they were acquainted, Ju Ha denied it and asked if he was close to Spectre, Jun Ho told her that it was only a professional relationship, she requested that Jun Ho get her book autographed by Spectre. Jun Ho reluctantly agreed as she requested to draw a heart on, Jun Ho told her that he won't write something cheesy. She thanked him and left. In the training room, Jun Ho reviewed his stats and discovered they were similar to when he was at level 60 in the past. He realized that when he enters the second floor, he will be at a disadvantage even with the use of Spectre's name and will need information from the big six to succeed. Jun Ho summoned 10 level 100 dummies and decided to relearn all the skills he had used in the past before heading to the second floor. He demonstrated his abilities by dodging an attack from one of the dummies and then countering with an attack infused with magic. The Frost Queen noticed this and Jun Ho confirmed that it used a lot of magic energy. He remembered a technique taught by Skaya called Booster and used it to charge and unleash a powerful punch that destroyed the area, impressing the Frost Queen. However, after the display, Jun Ho was exhausted and explained that even when he was Spectre, he could only use the booster technique for 10 minutes. Therefore, he plans to train until he can use it effectively in battle and then challenge the Winter Castle. A week later, the Frost Queen reminded Jun Ho that his body temperature was too high and suggested that he use the Frost skill to lower it. Jun Ho replied that he had tried, but if he used both the Frost and booster techniques simultaneously, he couldn't control it. He estimated that it would take a few months for him to be able to use them effectively in battle. Despite this, he was satisfied with his training and contacted his secretary, informing her that he will be heading to the Winter Castle Gate in Antarctica. Jun Ho arrived in Antarctica with Duke Gu, who was shivering. Duke Gu left immediately as his only task was to bring Jun Ho there. The Frost Queen remarked that Duke Gu was too fragile for the harsh weather. Upon arriving at the gate, Jun Ho checked the information and saw that the clear objective was to defeat the Lord of the Winter Castle, with a difficulty level of brutal. He entered the gate and wondered where the castle was located, but the Frost Queen directed him to go northwest and informed him that they were in the Ice Kingdom of Niflheim, the country she used to rule. The Frost Queen was perplexed as to how the Winter Castle still existed since she had left it. Jun Ho asked her for any information about the castle, such as the number of guards, or if there were any secret passages. The Frost Queen became angry as he was asking her to reveal the country's secrets. Jun Ho jokingly suggested that their destinies were already connected and they would be together forever. Eventually, the Queen relented and shared what she knew, mentioning that she had initially intended to summon all of her knights to the previous gate that Jun Ho had entered when he was Spectre. The Frost Queen remembered there were 27,000 soldiers in the Winter Castle, but believed the number to be lower because they were now inside a gate. She also mentioned that it might be possible that the only one in the castle was Sir Kiss, a loyal knight who was the lord of the Winter Castle and known as the Sword of the Kingdom. Jun Ho asked about his strength, to which the Frost Queen replied that Sir Kiss would only need one finger to defeat him. Jun Ho thought that Sir Chris was stronger than her, but she became angry and explained that she was extremely weakened when they fought. Jun Ho was relieved as he thought that Sir Chris might also be weakened. The Frost Queen explained that behind the door, there was a hall where 100 knights awaited, and he would have to fight each one to prove his strength. Jun Ho exclaimed why she had only told him this now. She reassured him that during the proof of knighthood, the fights would be one at a time. As he opened the door, he saw the knights facing him, the door closed, and the knights drew their swords. A knight named Horan Simus asked him to state his purpose, and the Frost Queen instructed him to say that he came to prove his knighthood. Jun Ho was doubtful as the knight repeated his question and warned him that if he did not answer, he would be considered a trespasser. Reluctantly, Jun Ho said that he came to prove his knighthood. Three months have passed, and Jun Ho is shown sitting in front of a fire, eating his bread as he reflects on what had happened. The first knight stepped forward and pointed his sword at him, but Jun Ho found the fight to be enjoyable. He noticed that all of the knights he fought were strong, and if they were compared to players, they were at least level 100. Their fighting techniques were almost flawless, and all of them used weapon aura that is unique to them. He wondered if they were more dangerous than players. Jun Ho was not aware that Sword Aura could have diversity, the Frost Queen asked him to explain what he meant, he explained that a player only uses one type of weapon aura, infusing magic into their blade to create an aura like a flame. However, the knights use auras like drills or sharp auras like spears. Jun Ho asked if there were player systems in Niflheim, and the Frost Queen was certain that there were not. 
Jun Ho assumed that the knights cannot obtain stats or skills, they achieved their level just through training their bodies and magic all their lives. The Frost Queen asked Jun Ho if he had any insight on using his sword aura, to which he replied that all that is needed to create an aura is enough magic power and understanding. The Queen said that her knights found a weapon they could handle well and created an aura that best suited their fighting style and weapon. As a result, Jun Ho decided to learn more about weapons and make a new aura his goal. After training for three months, Jun Ho challenged the knights again. The knight attacked him with a sword wave, Jun Ho blocked the attack, but was still affected by the aftershock. He retaliated by using the same technique the knight used, and the other knights were surprised. Jun Ho smiled and invited the other knights to attack. After a while, Jun Ho defeated the knights. Haran Simus approached him and asked for his name, Jun Ho introduced himself, and upon hearing his name, the knight told him that out of all the knights he had faced, Jun Ho had left the greatest impression. Then he gave him a token of honor, a symbol that shows that he has proven his knighthood. The knight explained that those who have passed the test may request a meeting with the lord of the castle. The knights bid their farewell to Jun Ho as he leaves to meet the lord. He felt the pressure coming from Kiss Bremen as he saw the lord sitting on his throne.